All right, guys. Chris Gray, he's passed Lyle Thompson's points record. You know, he's got 401 to end North Carolina's season. Unfortunately for North Carolina, however, uh, two of the worst offensive performances I think I've seen in the past two weeks. I've, I think I've seen two terrible offensive performances. The Notre Dame game was even worse, but the Duke game was just as bad. You know, we're talking North Carolina had to ride the coattails of Chris Gray for, you know, the entire season, and it did not work out. Did not work out against Notre Dame because North Carolina didn't score for 30 plus minutes of game time. Um, I believe the Duke game, you know, which I saw earlier this afternoon, um, it was in a delay for quite a while, too. The Duke game, oh, that was rough. We're talking maybe like a whole, I think the whole third quarter, they didn't score. And in part of the fourth, they didn't score. So, you know, the ACC, no tournament. Remember, no tournament for the ACC because they don't have an automatic qualifier. They don't have that. And, you know, a lot of people were like, oh, well, you know, a lot of, at least a lot of the broadcasters have been like, oh, well, the ACC should get more teams in and stuff like that. And I just don't think that's the case, you know, this year. Duke Notre Dame next weekend will be the deciding factor and we'll talk about all this stuff again, you know, come my birthday, you know, but you know, the ACC Virginia has won the ACC technically uh, because, you know, they went 5-1 and one in conference play, you know but they're going to be at it large and they're going to be, you know, seated somewhere I think, uh, but the only other team I can see from the ACC getting a bid is either Duke or Notre Dame. I think the RP and I know RPI is a flawed, you know, method and stuff like that. And a lot of people have been, you know, getting on and on about that on Twitter and stuff like the past few days. But Notre Dame, Duke, that is an elimination game. North Carolina was eliminated when they lost to Notre Dame, honestly. I do not know why, you know, people were pushing, you know, or at it you know, the ACC network, you know, at ESPN were trying to push that Notre Dame, or at a North Carolina could still get a shot at it at large. They just don't have it. They don't have the wins. They don't have anything. They have, you know, some losses that truly look terrible. I mean, the Duke and the Notre Dame losses sh should tell you the story right there. In the Big Ten, you know, the semifinals have been set already. Michigan and Penn State were eliminated this weekend. In the quarterfinals, Michigan just a bad, bad end to the season. Again, we talked about this back in February. Was Michigan a fraud? Yes, I said. I said they were. I think they are. And look at that. They're sitting at home. Penn State, you know, they beat Michigan, which was pretty insane to me. But the four teams left in the Big Ten are Maryland and John Hopkins, a, a unstoppable Maryland with Logan Wisnowskis, by the way. And Rutgers, Ohio State, a Rutgers team, you know, that, you know, many think if they don't win against Ohio State, could lose a bid to somebody, but I genuinely don't think that because I think Rutgers has a strong enough, you know, they have, they have, they have the materials to get themselves in. Um, the committees released both their top 10 rankings prior to the prior to selection Sunday and everything like that. Not much has changed, um, you know, at all. So, you know, in the Big East, you got Georgetown and Marquette, Denver, Villanova. Um, Denver, Villanova right there, that's going to be key, I think. You know, one of those two teams are going to get in if they win, you know, the semifinal. I don't think they're going to beat Georgetown, though. Um, I saw them against Loyola. Georgetown looked like a team that is on another level. They're they're getting close to that Maryland level, but they're not there. I don't think. I think Georgetown can make a deep run in the tournament. We'll, we'll, you you know we'll be talking. You know we'll be talking about the tournament come, you know, come late Sunday night. Um, in the America East, Vermont and Albany will clash. Then Big Hampton and UMBC will clash in the other semifinal. Vermont favored to win the America East. Um, going to be really intriguing there. The A-Sun, Utah, Bellarmine, and Robert Morris Air Force. You know, those are the semifinal matchups there. 
you know, that, that's going to be real intriguing to see right there, too, because Utah, they're looking for their first ever bid to the NCAA tournament. Can they get it? We'll see. In the CAA, you got Delaware and Drexel in one semifinal, and then Towson, UMass in the other semifinal. I'll be watching the CAA championship. I don't think I'll be watching the semifinals, but I know I'm going to be watching the championship. Oh, championship Saturday is going to be real, real fun. A little eight, you know what? Yeah, eight championships should be contested on Saturday, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I can't count. Yeah, eight championships should be contested on Saturday. And I'm going to be watching a good chunk of those championships, let me tell you. Um, you know, the SoCon, SoCon's an interesting case because you have Jacksonville. Again, a team that doesn't have, you know, the RPI, but they have the big wins. And it's unfortunate because, you know, the SoCon had some really, really weak teams in it. You know, like Hampton, unfortunately. You know, I, I know, I know. Show it off. You should show it off how I don't like HBCUs around here. But, you know, SoCon really only, it's Jacksonville and Richmond. And then High Point's like right there, too. So Richmond and High Point are playing in one of the semifinals in the Jacksonville VMI. Jacksonville has to win the SoCon to get in. They have to win it. Otherwise, no dice. You know, you have to have, you know, a stronger conference than that. It just is what it is. We see this time and time again in other sports. You know how you have to have a strong, you know, resume to get in. And, you know, despite, you know, the non conference schedule look at the part, you know, the non conference wins look at the part, Jacksonville just doesn't have, you know, the conference wins. The conference wins are weighing, you know, the so called, you know, down a little bit. The Ivy League is going to get at least four bids, you know. Maybe even five, honestly. Brown won the Ivy League. Not not Cornell, not Yale. Brown won the Ivy League. And that's going to be one of the games on Sunday, you know, to cap it all off. So, you know, Brown takes on Penn. Cornell, on, Cornell versus Yale on Friday night. Going to be real intriguing to see that. Going to be real intriguing. And then the Patriot League also is a you know, Friday um, semifinal Sunday championship game type deal. But the quarterfinals take place on May the 3rd with between Bucknell and Loyola and Navy and Lehigh now. If you saw Loyola, Lehigh, my goodness, the longest face-off I've ever seen in my entire life. That took like 60 seconds of my life, man. Uh, but, you know, aside from maybe Bucknell, I think anybody in the Patriot League could win the tournament. Which is crazy to me. Um, I don't know if they're going to get two bids, but I, I, I'm cheering for them, though. I'm cheering for the Patriot League to get at least two bids. Boston, you know, is the number one seed. Army's the number two. Whoever is the highest seed remaining will go to Army, and the lowest will go to Boston on May 6th in the title game, May 8th. So, going to be intriguing. It'll be real fun right there, let me tell you that much. And then the. Mid Atlantic Athletic Conference, the back of St. Bonaventure will be taking on Siena and Marist in Manhattan will get together. And that title game is going to be very early in the morning, you know, on May 7th. Going to be barely early, you know, 10 a.m. Eastern, early, you know, got that ESPN moniker, ESPNU. So get, get up early. And, you know, St. Bonaventure is a team that's looking really intriguing right now. You know, I, I I think you know if they can you know win the Mac, you know they they can get themselves into the tournament. But uh, any but it's any it's anybody's game in, in these conference tournaments. It's anybody's game. Let me tell you that much. And in the NEC, um, you got St. Joseph's who won the NEC by virtue of you know being at the top of the conference, taking on LIU and then Bryant's and Hobart, Bay fifth, and then the title game. May 7th. So again, a lot of these conference titles are going to be on May 7th. Be sure to watch out for Duke Notre Dame though on, you know, May 8th. Yeah, May 8th. It's either May 8th or May 7th. One of those days. That's going to be a at-large bid right there. So, you know, I, I think, you know, the bubble this year isn't really, you know, all that. You know, Princeton's going to get in. You know, Harvard, you know, sinking slowly on the bubble. 
you know, Army right there. They have the, they have some good wins, but unfortunately, you know, wins like Syracuse don't mean much anymore. Uh, North, I think I said North Carolina already. Duke, Notre Dame, just just not there. They're gonna have to. Somebody's gonna have to win that game. You know, Duke has the better RPI right now, but it might have shifted in like the nanosecond since I posted. You're at a since I post this video, you know, and everything like that. But we know everything we need to know about the conference championships. So you know, I'm I'm rooting for you know a tournament that's gonna be you know exciting, fun, and you know, despite the fact that you know everybody's you know freaking out about Maryland, I don't I don't think this is gonna be as easy. As I think it is, you know, I don't think this is going to be an easy walk for Maryland as I think it is. I think, you know, Maryland can be tested, you know. So, we'll see if Johns Hopkins can actually test Maryland this time because they didn't in their um, regular season finale. They did not do that. And then we get to the National Lacrosse, ugh, Lacrosse League. National Lacrosse League, the playoffs. They're here, finally. And... The first round of the playoffs will be just a single elimination game. Remember, they changed the uh, the quarterfinals. You know, they changed the uh, or rather the semifinals, and, and, and they changed that to a best of three. The NL finals are a best of three. So, first round of the playoffs as follows: Halifax taking on Toronto, Colorado Baba taking on Calgary. Both of those are on base six. Albany. Buffalo, Buffalo, the best team in the league right now. A lot of concerns are about Buffalo right now. Let me tell you that much. And then the Wings of Philadelphia taking on San Diego, the Seals. And both of those, the Buffalo Bandits, San Diego Seals games will be on May 7th. The quarterfinals are in between May 12th and 30th. So, you know, that's like 19 days. Uh, I don't know how this is going to work, but we're going to get those quarterfinals in. And then the NL Finals, June 2nd and 20th. In between those 19 days, we'll have the NL Finals. So, And, you know, predicting the NL Playoffs is a little bit harder for me. Um, you know... You know, most most of the conference championships, I really want the top teams to advance because I want a competitive, highly touted you know NCAA tournament. But the but the NFL playoffs, however, you know, it's a little bit more interesting. It's a little bit more of an intriguing factor because of the best of three aspect in it. You know, so it's going to be a little bit harder. We'll see how you know things shake out in the first round. You know, come back with some real predictions in the semifinals and whatnot, I think, you know, you know, but, but if I had to say right now, if I had to say, I'd go Toronto, Colorado, Buffalo, and San Diego. I, I think, I think that, I think that'd be, you know, I think that'd be suffice, you know, as, you know, the picks and everything for the first round for me, but I'm probably going to be wrong about that. And then, you know, the last two things here are the Las Vegas Desert Dogs. They're the new team playing in Michelob, uh, Michelob Ultra Arena or whatever, that arena out there in Las Vegas. Uh, Sean Williams, former NLL player, Hall of Famer, he will be the head coach. Joseph Sy, Wayne Gretzky, Steve Nash, Dustin Johnson on this Desert Dogs team. Um, logo is kind of generic. You know, in my eyes, but I mean, it is what it is. And then the PLL draft. Oh yeah, May 10th on ESPNU. Oh yeah, gotta, I'm, I'm liking that. I'm liking that. I'm, I'm waiting to see what the PLL, you know, TV schedule is looking like. Because right now, you know, I go to ESPN, you know, the press room. I go to the ESPN press room and whatnot, and I don't see the PLL on ABC or anything. I see like Special Olympics. See the WBA, of course, because they have to carry the WNBA, they have to carry MLS, they have to carry the Stanley Cup in the NBA Finals. But you know, there's some times in there where I think the NLL or rather the PLL can sneak some games in on big ABC. You know, but I don't know if ESPN is going to do that. So uh, it might be the it might be ESPN Plus for the first month of the season because you know ESPN's got other commitments as well. 
you know, because we know the first round of the NL playoffs is on the ESPN Plus, unfortunately. You know, sad to say, but it, it is what it is when you sign with ESPN. And speaking of another thing, Athletes Unlimited, they're, yeah, they signed. I, I, I haven't really been as high on Athletes Unlimited as other people have, but Athletes Unlimited, so basically, all of lacrosse is under ESPN's umbrella. All of it. Everything. Yeah, I know. All lacrosse is under ESPN's umbrella. I don't know how, I don't know why, but ESPN has it all now. They have everything from the lacrosse standpoint. So it's gonna be it's gonna be you know something you know to see how this all goes. I'm I'm thinking of watching um, the women's lacrosse championship. I'm thinking of doing that because again it's looking pretty feisty out there in the women's game right now. And I don't know how Athletes Unlimited is going to do things, but I know, I know how it works, but I just, I'm just i still kind of apprehensive about it. I know I've said in the past that I wasn't going to be like, nah, I'm not going to be covering this league like that, you know, but we'll see. We'll see how everything goes, you know, as time moves on. But I'll see you all next, or rather, this Sunday, you know, we got to go over, you know, who the automatic qualifiers are for the men's lacrosse championship, the at larges, who's seated, who's not, who got snubbed, who didn't, and then the second round of the NLL playoffs. By the time those, by the time the you know um, the selection show is set, we should know the times for the second you know round games of the NLL playoffs. The PLL draft will have passed. Or rather, it won't have pa it will not have passed, but it'll be close. It'll be real close to getting there because again, it's on May 10th, not May 8th, May 10th. And you know, there you go. So that, that's it. That's all I gotta say. A lot of stuff is gonna get broken down next weekend. Cannot wait. We got a lot of lacrosse, you know, to come on and just dissect this week. So cannot wait. I'll see you all later this week for, you know, all that good stuff. The you know, playoffs, the quarter, or not the quarterfinals, the semifinals. I keep, I keep messing it up. And then, you know, the men's lacrosse championship and everything like that. So I'll see you all then.